Hi, this is Ralph, and I'm back again working on this checkbook register. We used conditional formatting to alternate the coloring of each monthly row. Odd numbers get um, a light purple, and I've got even months with a kind of a darker red color. So that's my checkbook register. The next thing I want to do is I want to get Excel to look at my checkbook register and put in the necessary information into the summary sheet. So I'm not going to enter numbers in by hand on the summary sheet. Excel is going to do all that for me. In order to prep for that, I needed some income categories and expense categories, which I did on the first video with the data validation list. And I just entered in all the appropriate categories for each expense or income source. Now, something else I need to do is I'm going to use the sum ifs function. And the sum ifs function is going to need some monthly information. It's going to need to know what month things are. It's just going to make things easier for us. Instead of extracting the month from a date, I'm going to go a slightly different route. I'm going to create a new column in here, right next to my date, and I'll just go ahead and call it month. And I will simply use the month function to determine the month from the adjacent date. And of course it's formatted as a date, so let me go ahead and convert this using my home ribbon to comma style, so therefore I can see January is a month one. I'll use my fill handle, just double click it, and that will populate the month number. So all my Januarys are month one, all my Februarys are month two, all my Marches are month three, and so on. This is going to be helpful when we're doing the SUMIFS function. Because basically, what I want Excel to do is I want it to total up all of my net pay for January. Okay, All net pay for January. It's going to have to look at my checkbook register. It's going to have to look at my net pay sources. I had two of them, one on January 15th and another one there on January 30th. It's going to have to total these two numbers together, which was $1,800. So basically, I made $1,800 of net pay in January, and I want the appropriate $1,800 to display on my summary sheet for that month for that income category, which means Excel is going to have to look for the appropriate month and the appropriate category and then sum those numbers and then, of course, display them. So that's where the sum ifs function is going to come into play. So I created this month function to make my life a little bit easier, but it's really not necessary from a human-friendly standpoint. So let me just go ahead and right-click, and I'm going to hide that column. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I'll go ahead and I want to select this entire table, and I want to make sure it's formatted as a table, which means Excel is going to kind of treat it like a named range. So I'll go ahead and click on A2. And in my name box, I'll go ahead and click in G300, and I'm going to do a, a, a shift enter. That basically selected A through G300. Oh, but I made a mistake. Since I made that new column, my checkbook actually goes to H300. So let me just click. I'll do a control home. Let's try this again. I'll click on A3, go to my name box, type in H300, and then shift enter. That'll select my entire table. On my home ribbon, I'll do format as a table. It doesn't really matter which one I choose. I'll just uh, choose this one right here. And then I'll click OK. Oh, I must have made a little mistake. So whenever you make a mistake, Control Z to undo. Let me try this again here. I didn't get my uh, header row selected, so I'll click on A2. That's really the beginning of my checkbook register. Type in H300, Shift Enter. Now everything is selected appropriately. Format as a table. Choose this option. Yes, my table has headers. Click OK. There we go. I think this is better. So now notice it gives me these little sort options for each of my column headings. But really the good reason for doing this is check this out. I go to my formulas ribbon and let me go to my name manager. I see that I now have a, a named range, which is a table, okay, and it's my checkbook. A3 to H300. I don't really care for that name, so let me edit it. And I'm going to go ahead and change the name to for table 2. I'll call it checkbook. So I now have a named range called a checkbook. I'm going to close that, and it's a table. And I'll see this actually in my drop down menu. Checkbook is an item. So it's going to let me refer to my checkbook much more conveniently. The formula is still going to look long and somewhat complex, but it'll be a little bit more reader friendly, human friendly. So this is all my prep here. Let me jump over to my summary sheet. We're going to start off small here. I'm just going to focus on net pay for January, and I know the answer should be 1800 So I'm going to start off with a sum ifs function. I'm activating the cell where I want the total to go. 
I'm going to click my paste function dialog box. I'm going to look for some ifs. Okay? Some ifs. Notice there's also a sum if function. Some if functions will sum based on one particular criteria. Some ifs will allow us to choose multiple criteria, which is what we want because I need to look for the month and for the category. So that's two criteria. So I'll do some ifs. Okay, now my sum range is going to be the cells that contain the numbers. Okay, so this is an income category. So my sum range is going to be on my checkbook. Let me move this over here a little bit. And of course, when you're summing, it's got to be numbers, not text. So basically, I'm going to select all of my deposit cells. So I'll start here. This is my first one. It's my F3, and I want to go all the way to F300. So I can just click and drag these all the way down, or I could just I could typing. There's different methods, of course. But I'll do it this way first. A300. All right. Now look what Excel did for me. This is so great. Okay. I chose A. Or I'm sorry. I chose F3 to F300. But Excel knows that it's a table, and it knows it's my checkbook table. So it says, you know what? You're just doing your checkbook, and you want to do the deposit column. And that's exactly what I want to do. So naming this table was a really smart step because it makes this much easier to look at. Look at. My sum range is my deposit column and my checkbook. Fantastic. Now the criteria range. Now my criteria range is what I want to check for. The first criteria that I'm going to look for is the month. I need Excel to look at my checkbook. In fact, I can just type this in by hand now. In my checkbook, in particular, I want it to look at my month. I want it to go through my checkbook and find all the months that are equivalent to the month in question. The month I'm really interested in right now is the month of January, but I'm not going to type January in. The criteria in question is going to be the month of whatever I have in my summary, B2. Okay. Oops. Okay, now let's pause here for a moment to think about this. I'm going to be summing up all of the deposits, notice checkbook deposits, by looking at all of the months available. What months do I want? I want the month of B2. B2 is the cell that contains my January on my summary sheet. I want that January month. I want all of the Januaries, basically. So I want all of the Januaries. Now B2, I'm going to make this. I'm going to click in there. I'll press my F4 key. Press my F4 key again. And um, there we go. That's what I want, actually. Because notice, all of the months in my summary sheet, they're all in row 2. So 2 is going to be absolute. However, January is in column B, February is in column C. So I want the column to be relative. So I have a relative column and an absolute row. I'm looking at all the months in my checkbook register where the month is January, in this case, the month of B2. That's not the only criteria I want. My next criteria range are going to be all of my income categories. So let me jump back over to my checkbook. Criteria range 2 are going to be all of my income categories. And I can select this down, or I could type it by hand, or I can click and then shift, and a bunch of different ways. But I'll do this click and drag technique again, just so we can see what Excel is going to do for me. Check this out. All of the income categories for my checkbook. Okay. So my sum range are all my deposits. My first criteria are the months that match up with the month on my summary. Criteria is going to be all of my income categories with the criteria. Or the criteria range is all the income categories, but the criteria two is going to be the criteria that matches up on my summary sheet where I have net pay. Now I don't just want A3. Let me go ahead and do. There we go. All of my categories, income and expenses for that matter, but all my income categories are in column A, even though they have different rows. So since they're the same column, my column is absolute and my row is relative. Okay, this is going to work. In fact, I'm even getting my correct answer of 1800 down here. This is fantastic. So, sum range is all the deposits in my checkbook. Criteria range 1, all the months in my checkbook. Criteria 1, the month that matches up with my summary month. Criteria range 2 are all the income categories in my checkbook. 
criteria 2 is going to be the criteria of net pay. I'm going to click OK and I see that I'm getting my 1800 display. So, so you can see that this is working. Let me jump over to my checkbook. And let's see, I'll change one of my, let's say on one of my pays, instead of 900, it was 750. Okay, 900 and 750, 900 and 750 for net pay for uh, January. Back to my summary, there's the total. Fantastic, now let me show you something else that can work too. If I went over to my checkbook, and instead of, you know, I had a 750 net pay, 900 net pay, then I had 83 YouTube. What if YouTube instead was net pay, all right, so that gives me 750,983 of net pay in January, 1733. Back on the summary, 1733. Back on the checkbook, let me convert this back over to YouTube money. Summary sheet is back to 1650. Fantastic. Now this part's going to be easy. I'm not going to use the fill handle, but I'm going to select my first one that's working. I'm going to copy it, Control C, click, enter, paste. There's $83 for YouTube in January. I'll select these two. Copy, Control C, select my remaining cells over here. Cut, copy, paste. Control V is in Victor. Excellent. So, based on this information, I've you know it looks like that in February I've only had $900 of net pay. Let's see if that's true. I jump over to my checkbook. I go to February. I see that I only had one net pay and it was $900. YouTube was 117. And that matches up over here checkbook. I see in March I had three net pays. 900, 900, and 900. Back on the summary sheet, that's reflected there. So my summary is getting accurate information from my checkbook register. Okay, now for the expenses it's going to be pretty much the same procedure. I'm going to activate my January rent expense and I'm going to start up a sum ifs function. So I'll do my paste function, sum ifs. Okay, my sum range are once again are going to be the withdrawals now, all the withdrawals from my checkbook. So I head over to my checkbook, select all the withdrawals. I'm going to start from the top here. I'll do a click. Get all my withdrawal amounts from my checkbook. There we go. My criteria range one are going to be all the months for my checkbook, so I'll just type that in. Excellent. My criteria one is going to be the month of the month in my summary for expenses. And I'm going to want that to be, of course, since they're all in the same row, I want relative column, absolute row, because those the columns will change. My criteria range two are going to be all of my expense categories from my checkbook. Okay, so I can go to my checkbook, get my expense category, and I just clicked on that top part, but let me go ahead and clean it up a little bit here. There we go all of the expense categories from my checkbook and the criteria in question will be the expense on my summary sheet. Let's see, the rows will change, that needs to be relative, but the columns will not, that can be absolute. So absolute column, relative row, click OK. I've got one that's working, $800 of rent in January. I'll copy that, enter to paste for the other cells, select all three. Control C to copy, select remaining cells, cut, copy, paste, Control V as in Victor. There we go. And this kind of makes sense. Uh, my rent for each month was $800. For groceries, it kind of varied, but I had, let's say, $270 in groceries in January. Let's see if it's correct. I go to my checkbook, and let's see, I had groceries, 53, 55, 53, 56, and 53. So I had five grocery expenses in January. All of those total up to $270. And of course, that's what's on my summary sheet. Fantastic. So there's our sum ifs function.